Hey guys, Simon here, and today we're gonna to be talking about when to bluff, okay? I'm gonna give you guys three tips for when I like to look for spots that are really good to bluff for in poker. Uh, I'm gonna have one bonus tip, uh, when not to bluff. Before we get into that though, I wanna let you guys know, we're still giving away Jimmy Drade's tips for how to crush preflop. Please go check it out in the description below. It's really fantastic stuff. I know we put a lot of time into it, uh, and it's really gonna help you guys out with your game. Completely free, it's absolutely worth checking out. We're gonna get into the topic for today. And the topic for today is gonna to be when to bluff in poker. And I'll give you guys a few tips for how to do it, a, few, a little bit of a tip for when not to do it. Um, but you guys might be asking, if you've seen me play, if you've watched any of my streams, you watched a few of my hands, you might go, Simon, but you always bluff. I, you get to the river, you don't have showdown, you bluff. And whilst that might seem the case uh, when you watch me play, there is actually spots that I do give up on and spots that I do particularly look forward to bluff. Um, and so I'm gonna give you guys some tips for how to find these spots yourself. Um, the first thing I wanna say, uh, and it's, we're gonna have to you know, just get this out of the way, is I'm not gonna talk about blockers. I don't really care about like what makes a good blocker. If you guys wanna go see my full thoughts on blockers, I have a video, I wanna go check it out. Hopefully it's you know up on the screen. <laughs> um, but really it's, um, that's like, you know, when we're talking about bluffing, we're not talking about the minute things about blockers that makes Pi want to bluff or not. That stuff really doesn't matter. What matters more is like, are our opponents weak? Are they likely to overfold? If our opponents overfold, blockers don't matter. Go bluff that miss flush draw. Uh, but if you know, uh, you know they are overcalling, all of a sudden we don't bluff everything, even our best bluffs. So it doesn't really take much overfolding or overcalling for us to really change what we want to do. So with that out of the way, what, what do we look for uh, when we're bluffing? And the first tip that I have for you guys today is, you know, we're gonna look for, well, this is like kind of the theme for the videos, is we're gonna look for when opponents are weak and they overfold. So the first thing that we're gonna look for uh, when we're looking to bluff is broken lines. Uh, broken lines are anywhere where a check occurs. Um, so like, you know, let's say it's button versus big line, it goes C bet on the check, C bet on the flop, um, check, check on the turn, that you know that's a broken line so when you get to the river either as like the big blind or either as the button that's going to be a really good spot to bluff and the typical reason why broken lines are really good to bluff is our opponents likely weaken them if they broke it themselves by checking um it likely means that you know they're actually not super weak um and they're actually gonna have just a lot of stuff that just auto folds um the other spot is like if we are the one breaking the line ourselves so let's say we're the button it goes I mean, button versus big line we see bet flop they call it goes check check on the turn when it gets to the and they check again, we've let them check twice, okay? And once they check twice, it's a real big sign for weakness and a typical spot where people are going to overfold. So this is one of the first things I look for. Anytime the line is broken, it typically means they've got lots of stuff that's just given up that shouldn't, lots of hands that are weak or marginal that might not want to call a bet and their bluff catchers don't even call as much as they should as well. So this is a really big thing. Um, anytime your opponent breaks the line by checking themselves or you break it and they like, you know, sit there and check themselves, really good spot to target and really good spot to really apply pressure and put them in tough spots. All right, so our first tip is to look for broken lines. And I, I think this one is pr pr pretty easy to do. And it's gonna be like, you know, not be often in all in spots. So it's one that you're a bit more comfortable with. Um, and something that I know that a few of like, you know, my students, when I try to get them to do these things, they're a little bit uncomfortable at first is they don't wanna bluff things because they don't wanna lose that money. They wanna like, you know, they, like, you know, they can just check back and lose what they've already put in. Uh, and we gotta, we gotta, it's important that we don't be scared here. Um, and this comes to it, my second tip. And my second tip when we were, are looking to bluff is when we get a good, good price to bluff. Um, and this, this, this really does make a really big difference because people aren't as elastic to price as they should be. Um, let's say, you know, uh, we're in a spot when it gets to the river and you know, uh, our all in is pot or our all in is gonna be like 50, 60% pot. What actually happens is people actually defend these sizes pretty, you know, pretty close to each other. They don't actually really drastically change their call in ranges based on the size of the pot. This means that when the pot is like, you know, when our all in size is only gonna be 50, 60% pot, or we get to use like a bluff sizing for like 50% on the river. This is a really good sizing to use as a bluff because people are more likely to overfold it. When we, when we use those small bet sizes, people are meant to be defending like 50%, people are meant to be defending like, you know, 75% of their range. And this just isn't happening across the board. So if you ever are in a spot where you get a really good price to bluff, uh, let's say like, you know, the all in sizing isn't very big. Maybe you get to raise over the top of someone else and it's not like a really big raise. Um, maybe even if it's just like a broken line and you, you get to like, you know, do bet, check bet and use that 50% size on the river. These are all really good things that are really good for bluffing because people typically overfold versus these smaller sizes. So we want to be looking for a good price to bluff. Um, it makes a lot of sense, particularly when you think about how inelastic people are. 
And so this brings us on to our last tip for bluffing. Um, and this is going to be when our opponent has lots of bluffs themselves that we can fold out. Um, and this one kind of seems a little bit funny. It's like, what, what do you mean we're trying to get people to fold bluffs? But a really big part of like what makes a bluff profitable is the fact that we get to fold out our opponent's bluffs, particularly when we're raising, okay? A lot of the stuff that I've talked about then is like, you know, uh, when we're just betting ourselves uh, in broken lines um, or when we're getting a good price like on triple barreling. But this is one where we're looking to raise. And the important thing is that when we raise, it's awesome when we when like when they have a ton of bluffs because these just normally auto fold to our raise and we just get to win the pot. And then we also get to fold some strong hands they have as well. And so when we, what we're looking for is we're looking for spots where we think our opponents have lots of bluffs. And what spots do our opponents have lots of bluffs in? And it's typically going to be in wider range spots. It's things like button versus big blind, blind versus blind, single all these like single raise pots. Um, and these are typically going to be really good spots where let's say, um, you know, uh, we see about the flop button versus big blind goes check, check. And our opponent takes a stab on the river. If we've used a small bet size on the flop, they're going to have tons of missed air cards when they take that stab on the river. So raising this spot works really, really well because they're going to have lots of bluffs that we can potentially fold out. So this is one of those things that we like to look for. We like to be thinking, you know, if we're our opponent, do we have like many, like, do we have lots of bluffs ourselves if we are in this spot? If the answer is yes, it probably means it's a pretty good spot to attack because what's meant to happen is they're probably meant to fold like, you know, uh, all their bluffs and then, you know, defend most of their like value hands. But what actually ends up happening in practice is they fold all their bluffs. They don't turn many of those into like three bets. Uh, and then they also fold some of their value hands that really are meant to be defending. So these normally make really, really profitable bluffs. So we've talked about, you know, my three tips to look for when I'm bluffing and, you know, Generally, there's not really too many bad spots to bluff, uh, but these are just the spots that I they, they, my tips for like, you know, the really, really good spots to really go attack your opponents, particularly if you're not comfortable with bluffing. If you're dipping your toes in the water, you don't want to go, go nuts and just bluff everything. Follow these three tips, look for these spots, and I think you're going to have a really, really fun time in games going for bluffs. But here's my big one. Here's my, my, my one bonus tip at the end. And this is when not to bluff. And I think this is something that I actually think about more because my default like state with my game is typically I'm looking to bluff. I'm looking to apply pressure. I'm looking to be aggressive. And whilst these tips are like, cool, you know, green light, let's go, let's fire the bluff. There's often like, you know, this one, like one red light that I have that stops me from wanting to bluff. And this is when our opponent has tons of bluff catches in their range. Okay. And we have lots of bluffs. Okay, and so if we think about like what actually makes this up, it's a spot where your opponent entire range could bluff catch. Okay, basically, and our entire and we have like a ton of hands that could potentially be bluff. Okay, and the classic example I like to think of is in in, in this spot is imagine it's like button versus big blind. Okay, flop comes ace nine deuce uh, uh, rainbow. Turn is it and we see bet. They call the turn is a ten that brings a flush draw. We barrel, we go for that big overbet, and they call. We get to the river, and the river's a brick, okay? This is a spot where we had tons of bluffs. We had a ton of gut shots, we had a ton of flush draws. So many hands missed. Yes, we still had a bunch of value hands too. But think about our opponent. Our opponent has check called twice out of position. They don't really, they're not going to have any air. At best, they might have something like king queen. But they're actually just basically, they're saying they have a pair. They always have a pair in this spot almost. And so they have a bluff catcher. We have a ton of bluffs. And what a, a thinking opponent will do from the big blinds perspective will go, this is a wide range spot. My opponent has tons of bluffs. Um, it's really easy for them to over bluff here. Everything bricked out. And they can just call their entire range here. And our bluff in just loses a ton of money. These spots are awful. And this is typically going to happen when you're triple barreling. Tri typically, if you're triple barreling, particularly at the like, lower stakes, people will check call twice. They're not going to fold the river. And so triple barrels are actually my spot that I, I typically avoid bluffing. These are my spots that I don't like to bluff as much because I find that people will overcall. Uh, so this is my big red light for when not to bluff, when uh, we have tons of bluffs and any thinking opponent uh, can use all of their bluff catches to call us. I hope this helps you guys. Uh, these have been like, you know, hope you find these tips hopeful. Hopefully you can be a bit more aggressive in your games. Uh, find some more bluffs yourself. Uh, and until next time, cheers. Cheers.